Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I want to thank you for watching this video and I want to make something clear as um, I create these new videos I'm kind of taking a new perspective on things you know in the past uh, I've made videos trying to really get at the people in the church systems and go after you know kind of uh, argue points of doctrine and not really argue but just kind of uh, rebuke points of doctrine maybe we'll say I don't know what the words are but they're religious sounding words needless to say um, my thoughts on the matter is that Jesus Christ came to this earth to save humanity he came to save everybody not just people who go to um, a certain denomination of churches on Sundays or Saturdays or whatever day they want. Everybody, every person who's breathing on this planet has a chance to be spiritually saved from the forces of darkness and death. And that means everybody. So I'm going to try and tone down the religious sounding talk on my videos so I can speak plainly and clearly to everyone because these are lessons for humanity and for people at large it's not like again it's not just for people who walk around with a King James Bible in their hand it just isn't I've come to that understanding and it took me a while to get there but I'm here and anybody who feels bad about that or is disappointed well I don't know what to tell you but you know our goal is to preach the gospel to the entire world, not just to church people who go to churches on Sunday and that profess something that they don't even really believe anyway. So that being said, this is a pretty cool video, pretty exciting video, and I got very excited to do it, and it's very interesting. And I'm going to use the scriptures as my... always use the scriptures because the Bible, I believe, is the inspired word of God, the scripture, the original scriptures, maybe not so much the translations that are out there, but it's uh, what's encoded in the Bible, if that's the kind of word you want to use, is very, very, very interesting. And the more you read it and the more you understand it and the more you look at behind the scenes and don't take it just for face value, the more and more and more it starts to make total and complete sense in that this is the way we're supposed to live our lives now and forever. So without further ado, let's go into the next slide. So what kind of thoughts typically run in your head? Are they, would you say they're good and clean thoughts and thoughts that are beneficial to other people, loving thoughts, or would you say they're selfish thoughts? Thoughts about getting everything out there. Oh, I want that new car. Oh, look at that Mercedes. Oh, look at that girl. Oh, look at that guy. Look at that food. Man, I'd really love to have that. Oh, why does that guy have that job? I wanted that job. You know, God's going to give me a new job. He's going to give me a better job. All that stuff. Is that what goes through your head? Or when you look out into the world and you see people and you say, hey, these are my brothers and sisters. These are the kind of people that I want to help, that I want to teach, that I love. And you know, not, you know, we're not going to support what people do. No one's saying that. No one's saying we go and tell people, hey, yeah, it's okay to do this, that, and the other. No, of course not. But we are to love people, and we love people by treating them better than we treat ourselves. How about that? So let's start on this um, slide. And many people really believe that it's their destiny to walk this world with no choice but to give in to their wrong or dark desires. We've seen the cartoons, you know, with the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. And the person and the cartoon character normally gives in to the devil, right? He he torps the, the angel off his shoulder and gives in to the devil. Wah, 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 and then he goes and does all kinds of horrible things. But in fact, uh, the religious will proudly proclaim in some denominations and probably the majority of them that they sin every single day in thought, word, and deed. And they think this is a good thing. Well, it's just human nature. It's the way we're born. There's nothing we can do. Um, and people who may not espouse to a sin nature type thing, they also believe that kind of thing. You know, well, it is what it is. You know, we're only human. So is, is, is that true, that we, we're just um, victims of circumstance, right? 
That's all we are, victims of circumstance. We're born into this world. We are what we are, and that's that. Is that true? Well, the scriptures paint quite a different picture of how human beings should think and behave. Let's go to the book of James, um, chapter 1, verse 21, where it says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Well, there, I, I, there it goes. I, maybe, did I break my promise of not speaking all religious? Well, let's just read through that for a second. It says, Therefore, just put away all your dirty thoughts. Stop thinking like that and receive the message, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is the seed or the spirit of God or, you know, the Holy Spirit, the grafted word, which is the good word, which is to do what's right, which is able to save your souls. So, in other words, if you got stinking thinking, if you got dirty thoughts, if you got bad thoughts, if you got hate, if you got all this stuff going on in your head right now, guess what? Your soul is not quite saved yet. It's on, you know, you do, you have a chance that you can be on your way, but at this point if those th- if those thoughts are running around your head and and they're keeping and they're making you do wrong things and you're acting upon them, guess what? Your soul it's not quite saved. Next. Now here are a few more scriptures that we can uh, add into that. Uh, let's go to Second Corinthians seven one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now that sounds oh my 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 how hard! What are they talking about? You want me to be like God Himself? What is this guy talking about? No, he's saying, therefore, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from just crazy thoughts. Stop it. Stop doing it. Cleanse yourself from it. And we'll go into that, how that works. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness means doing, doing right things, doing good things. So instead of doing nasty things, you're doing good things. Or you're doing nice things, or you're doing loving things. But again, I'll get more into that later. Ephesians 5.3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, covetousness, let it not once name be named among you as becomes the saints. So here we go. You know, these things, it shouldn't even be named once. It shouldn't even be a thought in your head. That's what he's saying. You know, going around um, having s- sexual relations with whoever you want, whatever you want, whenever you want. And all uncleanness, which is what that is, which is how people get diseases and whatnot. And covetousness, which is what that is. You're coveting, you, you're, you're lusting after, you know, a bunch of different people, a bunch of different things in a bunch of different ways. And that's not, that's not how people should act. 1 Peter 4.1 For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he has suffered in the flesh and has ceased from sin. It means you do the same thing. You know? They'll put all these religious... Sin is a religious, religious word. Sin must not sinneth. No. What it means is to mi- miss the mark in, 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 in the Hebrew language. Or just to do what's wrong. To do wrong. To hate. To do... You know? If, if there's a dollar on the table and it's not yours and you steal it. You did wrong. Call it sin. Call it whatever you want to call it. But it is what it is. And so in the scripture, Peter's saying, arm, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind that Jesus Christ himself had. Well, that's a tall order, right? How are you going to do that? Romans 2.12, and be not conformed to this world. Don't be like everybody else. If Johnny jumped off the bridge, would you do the same thing? But ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Think differently. You got to renew your mind. You can't think the same old way you've been thinking all your life. That you may prove prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. In other words, what he's saying here in Romans is you start think you 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 renew your mind, you change your mind, you start thinking the right way. You put away those old thoughts and prove that to yourself that it's a good thing once you start doing that. 
it's incredible the release because you got to remember a lot of people you know you could go out and, and some of you out there probably know and you've studied the situation you've studied the words and that the, the human brain that actions don't precede thoughts thoughts precede actions you have to think about it before you do it now we have a lot of backwards speaking out there where people say, oh, I couldn't help myself, I couldn't this, or it's a sin nature, it dwells in me, all that kind of, that, that's, it really is just crazy talk is what it is. Everyone knows that it's been scientifically proven that you think before you act, whether it's good, bad, or neutral. So if you have a good thought and you act upon it, you do good things. You have a bad thought, you act upon it, you do bad things. You have a muscle, um... What do they call that? Muscle uh, memory thought where you scratch and you breathe and, you know, because we need those kind of reactions too because we'd stop breathing. We'd forget to breathe or we'd forget our heart has to beat and all that stuff. So that's the way the mind works. If you don't know how the mind works or you deny reality and you deny how the mind works, none of this is going to do you any good whatsoever. So what is the mind of Christ and how do we get it? It must be some really like high, you, you have to uh, climb Mount Shasta or, or, or reach the highest mountains or you have to be able to walk through walls or walk on water, right? Is that, is that what it is? Let, let, let's look. It's a, lot, it's, a, it's a lot more practical than what, you would, what people would make you believe it is. First, to claim no one has ever done or can do righteous or loving acts other than Jesus is just flat out lying to you. So uh, I'll leave that right there. And here's the easiest way to prove it. Uh, you go to our scriptures and you go to 1 John 3, 11 through 12, and it says, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. In other words, he followed his beastly, the beast, he followed his animal instincts. He was a base, lewd guy. And he killed his brother. And why did he kill him? says because his own works or actions or what he did was evil it was just wrong and his brother's righteous you're going to tell me you haven't been in school where they say hey, teacher's pet teacher's pet because there's one kid who studies and does what's right and follows the rules and does those things that are appropriate and everybody else wants to beat him or her up they smack him around they tease him don't tell me you don't you don't see that happening? Well, that's natural. Well, what about the person who's doing what's right? Ain't that natural? Or what? You know? You just make excuses for your own, for yourself. You're like Cain. That's what he's saying. You know? The righteous acts of love, the works we do, we must do. And they're powered by Christ. And we're working with him. No one's saying you, you're going to st stand on your own two feet and pick, pick up my bootstraps and do it myself. No. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So Christ provides us with the strength to do what I'm telling you, what I'm telling you, what he told us we must do. And I'm just relaying the message as I, as I understand it. You know, and those who try to discourage you, well, Peter mentioned that in 2 Peter 2.14, with eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They just won't. They seduce the unstable. With how? How do they seduce the unstable? They are experts in greed and a cursed brood. He's speaking with those who will not stop, and they provide excuses, and they and they and they seduce the unstable. It's like, ah, you can't do that. It's a sin nature, and they come up with all these crazy stories and fairy tales about you know something lurking in your body and all this other crazy things. No, you have the power to control it, and. Christ came here to tell you, you have the power to control it, and he came here to provide us with the power to control it in his way, and we'll go through that. So what is the mind? The word mind in the original Greek writings, what is it? It's, uh, you can find it in Strong's Concordance, um, or you can go to blueletterbible.org, that's blueletterbible.org, and you can, and you know, if you kind of work your way through there you can see how you can click on words and get the original Greek word and find the Greek meaning which is usually um, used by Strong's or other concordances but uh, in this case it's G3563 which is what Strong's uses to code their words and the word is noose which means the mind and what it means what is the mind it compromises 
compromising alike the faculties of perceiving and understanding and those of feeling, judging, and determining. So in other words, it's the seat of intellect. You've heard that before, right? The intellectual faculty of the understanding. Reason, in the narrower sense, is the capacity for spiritual truth of higher powers of the soul. Animals don't have that capacity to, to perceive things in a creative and spiritual manner. The faculty of perceiving divine things, of recognizing goodness and hating evil. How about that? The power of considering and judging soberly, calmly, and partially. A particular mode of thinking, judging, i.e. thoughts, feelings, purposes, desires. So obviously, it's, it's not, I wrote, it's, it's some, obviously it's not some ethereal religious thing. It's how you think. That's all. That's all it is. It's how and what you think. That's it. That's the mind. It's the way, it's the way intellect or intellect however you want to say it now make this one real quick there are just two ways of thinking love or hate right we have two sides we have two sides of our brain and i'm not saying that one side is a hateful side and the other side is a loving side no i'm not saying that come on i'm saying that um there's light and dark this and that far and near so we have love and hate and so you can't love and hate at the same time, which some people will claim they do. I love to hate you or something nonsensical like that. So let's talk about um, in the next slides about how these things work, how love works, how thinking and love works and how thinking and hate works and why one is good or right or righteous, shall we say, and why one is bad or harmful or sinful. One leads to life, one leads to death. Now, here's the proof. How are we supposed to think, right, in love? Philippians 2.5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, follow my logic here. Is Jesus God? Well, some people out there think believe with all their heart yes and some people say no there's some people who think he was just some kind of guy so let's see what john 5 18 says because of this the jews tried all the harder to kill him speaking of jesus not only was he breaking the sabbath ooh, religious festivals he was breaking them but he was even calling god his own father making himself equal with god and, and why did they do that? Because he forgave sins. Who else but God can forgive sins? Who else but God can forgive, can forgive you of your past, right? You know, you can't forgive others of their past. You can forgive others of what they did to you, but you can't say, oh, yeah, you, you went and you robbed $50 from Joe. I forgive you for that. Well, who are you to forgive them for that? Joe needs to forgive them for that. <laughs> not you. So you're not God. But Jesus did do that. He said, hey, your sins are forgiven you. Or what you've done in the past, all your wrong acts are forgiven you. So what is God? So that makes Jesus God. That's my take on that matter. And what is God? 1 John 4, 8. He that loves not he that loves not knoweth not God. He or he who doesn't he who doesn't love doesn't know God. For God is love, so God is love. So, let's go back. Let this mind be in you, which is all in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus was God, is God, and God is love. So, if you don't have Christ-like thinking, which is love, right, you won't see God. Hebrews twelve fourteen. Pursue peace with all men, as well as holiness, which means right thinking and right actions, which without, without which holiness, no one will see the Lord. So you got a lot of people out there doing a lot of bad things and a lot of nasty things and thinking a lot of nasty things and proudly proclaiming and beating their chest that they do it, but they believe in Jesus. Well, guess what? Doing those things, they will not see the Lord. It's written plain and simple. And I'm not just talking about those people. Because there's a lot of people out there who may not believe in Jesus, but still do bad, wrong, and harmful things. 
and they're not gonna and they're not gonna see life peace happiness and eternal joy either so here are some of the supporting scriptures that say we must must can and do and will etc cetera, etc cetera, have the same mind of Christ or have the mind of Christ not have the same mind of Christ have the mind of Christ 1 Corinthians 2:16 for he who has known the mind of the Lord, for who has known the mind, mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. See that? We have it. Philippians 2.5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as who? As Christ Jesus. He's telling you, telling us to do that. Hebrews 8.10. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds. Where is he putting it? In their minds. And write them on their hearts. Heart and mind are synonymous, by the way. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. 1 Peter 4, 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with what? The same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Romans 12, 2. We did this one before. Be not conform to this world but be transformed how by the renewing of what your mind well if you're sinning and if you if you if your mind's always on dirty filthy things and you can't help but sin and oop i sinned again oop i thought bad things again guess what you have, your mind's not renewed it's in the gutter like it's always been that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of god but as they said in the late night infomercials back in the 80s or whatever it was, but wait, there's more. Ephesians 4.23, And be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. The word renewed here is ananeo, which is only used one time in the entire New Testament, by the way. It means to take on a new mind. A new mind. Romans 8.27, He that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Sound mind does not mean sane, my friends. It does not mean sound, does not mean like, oh, he's got a, uh, you know, he's not crazy. It means, it means, it's sophronissimos, I believe is the word that's called self-control. So in other words, he has a mind that he controls. His mind is under, under his control. 1 Peter 1.13, Wherefore, gird up your lo the Lord loins of what? Your mind. Be sober. In other words, be controlled. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Again, sober. S sober does not mean not drunk. It means calm, collected in spirit, temperate, dispassionate, circumspect, under self-control. It means self-control. That's all it means. Philippians 2.3, let nothing be done for strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. So lowliness of mind just means I treat others better than I treat myself. In other words, I go the extra mile. Acts 20.19 speaks of a humble mind. Acts 17.11 speaks of a ready mind. 2 Corinthians 8.12 speaks of a willing mind. So if these if this isn't enough for you, then... I guess nothing's going to convince you at this point. But, and that, that one, your mind has to change. Two, it can change. Three, it's telling you how it must change. You must, you must turn away from the bestial, base, lewd, degenerate, reprobate mind and turn to a mind of love where you care for others better than you love God, of course, and you love neighbor as yourself. In other words, you treat people just as good as you would ever treat yourself, if not better. So again, the bottom line is you must and you can control your thoughts. So it's time, my friends, to upgrade your thinking and get your head and mind out of the gutter. Okay, so we've talked about the mind that's a loving mind. What is the op the opposite is hate, or in the Bible they call it, in the scriptures that reprobate, or in the translation of the scripture. I won't say that I don't like saying that the scriptures say reprobate because it's the translation that some guy gave it, some people gave it to say the word reprobate. What does reprobate even mean? Well, Strong's word and there's academios. I mean, it just means rejected, worthless, 
literally and morally a castaway re- rejected just you know like people say you got a dirty mind you got a garbage mind potty mouth right as your mind th- thinks so speaks your mouth and so are your actions dictionary a uh, reprobate means an unprincipled person with no standards a degenerate Romans one twenty eight, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate what mind to do those things which are not convenient. In other words, to do filthy things. 2 Timothy 3.8 Now as James and Giambra, Janus and Giambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. In other words, worthless concerning the faith. They have no faith. They just follow their own desires. Titus 1.16, they perfect, and these, this is speaking of people who are supposedly um, have turned to Christ and, you know, are, are followers of his. And what he's saying in Titus is that they profess that they know God, but in works or what it is that they do, they deny him. In other words, they say one thing and they do another. They're hypocrites, being abominable. And disobedient unto every good work reprobate so in other words if you're if you say well we're all humans we're all hypocrites is that what he's saying here in Titus that it's okay it's all good no he's not my friends he's not he's saying change your ways change your mind which is the word repent it means so here's more on the dysfunctional mindset Ephesians 2 3 among whom also we had our conversations in the times past. In other words, we're not doing this stuff anymore. In the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Because you fulfill the desires of the flesh by the thoughts of your mind. In other words, you're not going to do those things if your mind's not telling you to do it, if you're not thinking to do it, and you're not acting on it. And were by nature children of wrath even as others, which means everybody else, you know, you know, you're just acting like everybody else. That's all. That's all he's saying. Ephesians 4.17 This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you, from now on, that you don't do those things. You don't walk like that in the vanity of their mind or just following, doing whatever they think they want to do. Vanity means perverse, depraved, or dirty, right? They had dirty minds and they followed them. Titus 1.15 Unto the pure, all things are pure. So people who think good things do good things. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, in other words, their thoughts are just filthy all the time, nothing is pure. Even their mind and conscience is defiled. In other words, <laughs> their thoughts and even their conscience is defiled. That's pretty, that's pretty harsh right there. Revelation 7.13, these have one mind. These are talking about the dysfunctional mindset. They have, they do, they have one mind. And they shall give their power and strength unto the beast. In other words, the beast is their base thoughts. The beast is the dark side. The evil are a basest of instincts. In other words, it's a barbarian. And no, they have one mind. They are of one mind. In other words, there's two minds and they have one and the mind of Christ is another. They, meaning those who follow their lusts, passions, and desires. Those who don't have the mind of Christ, who follow that which is of love. So either you, like God said in, uh, like the words said in Deuteronomy, I set before you two paths, life and death. Choose life that you may live. Why do you choose death? In other words, you're choosing it. You think and you choose to act on it. You can't say, oh, I can't stop acting on it. You s- but you could do, but you can make lots of money. You could train. You could build your body. You could, uh, you know, put your mind to work. You can write a book. You could do all these things, but you can't. C- but for some reason, you just can't control that little old lust and desire that's hanging out in there. No, 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 no. But you could do everything but that, right? You're just making a bunch of excuses. That's all it is. Now, there are those who out there who claim it's kind of a Gnostic type thing that you could walk in the light and walk in the darkness back and forth and back and forth. One minute I'm in the light, next I'm in the dark. Then I'm in the light, then I'm in the dark. I love you, I hate you, I love you, I hate you, right? Is that true? No, come on. 
1 John 1, 6, if we say we have fellowship with him, meaning Christ, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. You're a liar, and you don't, and you don't tell the, you don't practice, you don't tell the truth. It's nothing but lies coming out of your mouth. What does it mean to walk in the darkness? Roman one twenty one, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, and rather, neither were thankful, but become vain in their imaginations and their minds. In other words, they let their and and their foolish heart was darkened. In other words, they let their mind. They let their thoughts, they let their lusts, they let their passions, they let their desires overtake them, and they became foolish and darkened. In other words, they became evil, if you want to call it that. Ephesians 4.17, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth not walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. Matthew 6.23, If your eye be evil, the whole body will be full of darkness, and if therefore the light that is in you is dark... How great is that darkness? In other words, you can't walk. <laughs> Jesus is saying right here, you can't walk back and forth. It says, no man could serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or, he, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. In this case, mammon means greed or just avarice. It's not just money. It means your greed. It means your lust. It means your desires, your passions, your lust for certain things. If that's what you follow, if that's what you act upon, if you cannot control that, you cannot serve two masters. You don't walk in the light and the dark at the same time. These are from the words of the master himself. So all that I just said, where does that leave us? Well, here's pretty much where it leaves you, where it leaves me, where it leaves everybody. We hear and believe the good news not that people were running around, you're going to hell, fear God, and all this other nonsense. No, you hear the good news that Christ came to teach us a new way that leads to a godly life in this world and eternal spiritual life in the next. He died to save us from error and death, and by his blood or life, by partaking in his life by his blood, we are forgiven of our sins and we partake in communion which is the breaking of the bread i have another video on that the body and blood of christ we partake in communion and our old ways are forgotten and forgiven forever in other words by his blood he cleanses us right his blood is his life then we commit to follow his example spiritually by killing our old man symbolized by crucifying our flesh and then being born again or transformed into a new person, symbolized by baptism coming out of the water into a new birth. The water, you know, we're born into this realm. We're born in water by our mother. First, we make the change. We crucify our flesh by taking control of our thoughts, not acting on temptations, and therefore not acting them out. Any action, good, bad, or neutral, always starts with a thought, and, act, and then acting on it. And Christ promised if we followed him, if we committed to following him by doing these things, he would send us the Holy Spirit to empower us. We will always have an escape from acting on our bad thoughts by rebuking them. If you remember, when Jesus was up in the mountain, he told Satan, you know, Satan tempted him with a bunch of things, and he said, ah, get thee behind me, go away, get away from me. You know, through the power of Jesus. You know, they see that, that that was that whole thing in, in the New Testament about rebuking demons in the name of Jesus, right? The demons are what's in your head, right? This is why someone who is really born again cannot sin or do evil deeds because God's seed, the Holy Spirit, is in us. The faith of a mustard seed, right? It starts really tiny. But it gets really big the more we use it and the more we exercise it, the more we water it. And we water it with the word, with truth, and our actions by obedience. So we control our thoughts. We put them under control. Therefore, obeying and acting in love, which is what God wants us to do. Now, for the naysayers and for... Anybody else out there who wants to know, and I don't really care about the naysayers, to be honest with you. I, You want to go do what you want to do and go keep on living, obeying your lusts? Nothing I can really do about that, is there? 
But for those who are hungry and want and know that they feel that this world is dark and evil and they want to get out of it and they want to escape it and they want to be different and they want to be, they want to do what's right, here's how it works. 1 Corinthians 9, 27. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, in other words, I preach this message to other people, I should myself become disqualified or a hypocrite. So this starts with our thoughts. 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down imaginations. What does that mean? You've got all these things going on in your head. I cast them down. I rebuke them. I get rid of them. Well, I don't say rebuke to be religious. I'm just saying you, 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 you control them. And every high thing that exalts it itself against the knowledge of God, you bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Not one thought, not every once in a while. It's every single thought thought you train your mind like you would train for a boxing match for a race for a marathon you train first corinthians 1 10 now i plead with you brethren plead strong word by the name of our lord jesus christ he's been please all of you speak the same thing that there be no divisions among you that you should be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment one mind. What is the same mind? The mind of Christ. 2 Corinthians 3.11, Philippians 2.2, Philippians 4.2, 1 Peter 3.8 all says what you what I just read to you, the same exact thing. In other words, all these things, one marriage for life, baptisms, this, that, the other, this, that. Are we supposed to eat bread? Are we supposed to do this? Are we? Sp- You're looking at it from the surface. You're not looking at it from a spiritual perspective. I'm telling you. And all spiritual perspective means is not that you cross your legs and you sit around with candles and incense and think and all that stuff. No. Spiritual sense means spiritual means your mind, means your soul. You're reacting to it that way. You're not reacting. You're not doing all these physical things thinking it's going to do you any any scintilla of good because it doesn't because everything starts in your mind now do you get it so to close philippians 4 8 finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy what does he tell you to do think about such things think about them because it all starts in your mind well thank you for listening to my listening and watching my video so spiritually hack your mind from vain from the vain mind of lusts hate to the perfect mind of Christ which is of love it can be done has to be done and if you want anything on this in this world to change, we need to change ourselves one person at a time. Because what did, what did Paul say? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. No one's going to do it for you, my friends. No one's going to do it for you. You have to take the responsibility for yourself and do it. And when you do, Christ said he will be there with you every step of the way. And he will help you and he will guide you if you do it with a sincere, honest heart. And that's what you really, truly want. You see what's going on out in the world. You see what happens every day. And you're hurt and confused, terrified, and even hate what's going on out there. Yes, you can hate what's going on in the world because it's, it's not very good. But how do you change things? Do you go out? Do you change things by going standing out on the corner and screaming at people and telling them what what rotten people they are no no you change it through love you change it through education you change it through teaching people christ came here and he taught people he came to teach he was the master they called him rabbi he was a teacher teacher what must i do he taught people what to do and then as god he was the ultimate sacrifice and gave his life and said do the same thing what i'm doing you do it too don't just 
observe what I'm doing and don't just point at it and don't just rely on it. What I do, you do as well. If you love me, keep my commandments. Now you know what that means. Not over, go look in the Old Testament and look at that. Oh, I got to do it. Oh, I got to cut my hair this way. I got to, well, my wife's got to, got to, I got to put my wife under obedience. She's talking. She must be quiet. She must wear a long burqa like dress with a sweat and 100 degree heat. She must be buttoned up to our eyeballs. That's control, my friends. That's all these people want to do is control. I'll leave you with this little thought, and some of you may not, some of you may not. The word government means to govern your mind. So are you going to let outside forces called the government, people who claim they are the government, govern your mind or tell you what you should think and do, which is the religions and the banks and all that other stuff and the entertainment and the sports and the news and the this and the that. That's why you don't love the world. They will govern your mind if you choose not to. And many, many, many of you are choosing not to. And what do you govern your mind with? The mind of Christ. You let Christ govern your mind. You let love govern your mind. And when that happens, miracles occur. Believe you me, that's the truth. God bless you all. Have a great one.